I have no lipstick left. That's okay. Yeah. You still I look, have it right there. You look really beautiful without it. Oh, thank you. That's okay. <laughs> I, I should just keep you around all the time. <laughs> I like the natural look. Hi, welcome to Craft Texas University. I'm Betsy. And I'm Galen. And today we're going to do a tote bag. Tote bag. I'm so excited. My we favorite things. We love making bags. And this tote bag is a little bit basic, right? It uses craft text on the bottom for structure and it has craft text as a design element on the handles. And we tend to add in a lot of stuff, so we have promised yeah. to just give one option for making this bag. Real simple, kind of tote bag with training wheels. We're not going to do any zippers, no weird pockets, anything. Mm. We'll do that later. Later. We'll do uh, that some other time. In a future class, we'll definitely go over ways to use zippers with regular pockets, but also especially with craft text. Yeah. But now, to this tote bag. So the materials that you'll need for your tote are... Do you I have. For the lining, you need two pieces of interfacing and two pieces of lining fabric cut at 18 by 17 and a half. For the outside of the top, you need two pieces of interfacing and two pieces of outside fabric cut at 18 by nine and a half. And then two pieces of craft text cut at eight, I'm sorry, 18 by nine. And then you have the and straps. The straps, the handles, you will need two pieces of fabric cut two and a half by 20 inches long, one of the lining, one of the exterior fabric, and you'll need one piece of craft text that is cut approximately one inch wide by 18 inches long, and we will trim that later. Now that you have your materials cut, it's start time to start the bag construction. And we like to start with the handles because you need the handles complete later. So Betsy, you did the handles. Tell us what you did. Okay. So first thing you do is you take those two two and a half inch by 20 inch strips, and you're going to put those right sides together like so. Line those up. If you need to pin them, you can. Usually I just sew it. And you're going to do your half inch seam. Oops, that's why you want to pin it because <laughs> it doesn't get all wonky like that. You're going to sew a half inch seam on one side. Once those are sewn together, you are going to open it up and you're going to press it open. And you will end up with a no, four. Don't like those. No, I there don't like little fuzzies. You will end up with a four inch wide by 20 inch strip. And then you've got your, you want to press this open. Now, from the handles that I did, I didn't use any interfacing because this fabric is pretty pretty stiff and we'll be adding the craft text later. But if you have a lightweight fabric and you feel like it needs a little extra support, you can cut a little strip about one inch, a little under an inch wide, uh, somewhere between 16 to 20 inches long. It doesn't have to go the whole length. And just slip it in there and as you're pressing that will get fused in there and just give it a little extra body if you need it. But I didn't need it so I'm going to take that back out. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to press each side in. It'll be folded right to the center piece right there. On both sides and you're going to press this really well and you're going to go down and I have one already done. What you're going to end up with now is you're going to end up with this all pressed in nice and neatly. Fold it over and give it a good press again, both sides. You want that really crisp and lovely because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to top stitch the edge. I like to top stitch this outside edge first so that it holds it together. And when both edges are top stitched, then you're going to have your strap's gonna look like this. Now, you could, nice leave it, you could leave it like this if you want. I like to add a little bit of craft text just to give it that kind of contrasting color and also to give it a little more support. So what I like to do is I figure out what, I like it to sit in between the two rows of top stitching. So if I need to trim it a little bit, I oftentimes have to trim it down to about three quarters of an inch depending on how close in my top mm -hmm. stitching got. So I trim that up and then you're going to top stitch it all the way around, all four sides, both ends. And then 
you will end up with a finished handle. That's and lovely. Trim up the ends and you're all good to go. And you want to repeat for the other one and you have your two handles. And like then we them. make the body of the bag. The body of the bag. So now we're going to make the body of the bag. Okay. It. So the first step is you are going to fuse your interfacing to the outside of all the pieces. This is the one of the top pieces. You're going to do it to the top two top pieces and to the lining if you're using the interfacing for the lining. So okay. you take your top piece and you take your craft text piece and you're going to layer them together. I'll say right sides together. Craft text doesn't technically have a right side, but the two sides do look different. They do. So on some pieces, it's more obvious than others. If if you have a really hard time telling the difference, then don't worry about it. But if there's a definite difference, make sure that for all the pieces that you're sewing together, you have your right side. I mark. find I notice it most with the unwashed. Yeah. One yeah, has like a little texture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna line them up and you can use clips to hold these together and then you, you're gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam. So there's a couple of uh, hints that we talked about in the basics video that we should go over now that we're going to sit down and sew. You don't want to sew back and forth because the craft text can perforate. So start your back stitching about a quarter of an inch in from the end, go backwards and then forwards again. That will hold the seam just fine. And then use a slightly longer stitch length than you normally would um, so the holes are a little farther apart. So now that we've sewn the top and the bottom of the front and back together, we've sewn them with the half inch seam, pressed it towards the fabric side, and then top stitched down the end. This is mm -hmm. what it, the finished top outside looks like. It's lovely. Oh, thank you. Looks lovely. So you have the top sewn to the bottom, and then you have um, the detail of the top stitching there. So what you're going to do is take your two outside pieces and you're going to put them together face to face. Do you want to grab that one? Get... Stitch down one side, across the bottom, and up to the top, and back stitch, back right? Stitch at both ends. Give it a little extra security mm -hmm. when you're turning it inside out. And probably when you're layering these two together and pinning them or clipping on the bottom, the most important part is where these two side seams meet. So you want to line these up. Um, show you here. You want to line the two seams up where the, the craft text and the fabric meet. Because um, that's where you're going to see it on the side. Yeah. So Betsy has an example there. So you will see right here, Galen did a beautiful job of lining those up. If you if you end up getting this off a little bit, then you're going to see that's what's where show. this is not quite matched up. See, this one's a I little bit of... No, that. no, that's okay. It's okay if it doesn't line up, but I'm just saying, you want to do your best to line those up when you're sewing them together. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so now that this is sewn, the next thing we're gonna do is box the corners. Do you wanna show what the box yeah. corner looks like when it's done? So this is the box corner on the finished bag, which makes a really neat, lovely little thing here. And shape. It gives it a nice shape, nice structure, helps it to stand up, and then you know when you open it up, it gives it some body in the bottom so that you can put your stuff inside. So it's got this nice little, the seams meet down here. There you go. So to box the corners on craft text, you have to get really rough with it. There's nothing delicate about this. So Don't the first shy. thing you need to do there. is put your finger right in that corner, right? And start to push down. Your goal is to line up this side seam and this bottom seam. So you're going to kind of grab it. You want it to form the most equal triangle as you can. And I push my seams. My side seams go one way. My bottom seam goes the other way. I reach in here and I feel for the seams so I can nest them nicely and start pushing them down. Okay, so at this point, I think I have them lined up. Feel it in there. 
and I'm pushing down. You actually have to use some strength to do this. I'm gonna get my ruler and the side measures five inches. That's the depth of our bag. So you're gonna measure, your line's gonna be five inches long. So the middle of that is two and a half inches. So you want the two and a half inch mark on your ruler to be straight down the seam. The corner of the, the length of the seam is gonna be right about at two and three quarters of an inches. So at five, at two and a half inches, two and three quarters down, you should be at about zero and about five. So I'm a little bit off. So what that means is I didn't get my seams matching up nicely enough. So I'm gonna kind of manhandle it some more, open my seams out more, line it up and measure again. So at two and a half inches in the middle, about two and three quarters inches down, I should be at zero and I should be at about five. And then you would just mark the line. Excellent. So I do have one, the magic of video, where I've marked my line, I've pushed it all down. And what you're gonna want to do is put a couple of clips, you don't have to put clips, but Betsy Kinda Will's helps. magic clips. I put the clips here to kind of hold just to keep it from sliding that triangle around. in place. And then I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew this seam and then cut it off with about a half inch seam allowance. So that's what it looks like in the end. And that's technically a boxed corner. And you'll notice that these go in opposite directions so that they're nested and lay flat. So when you open this up, it has that nice shape. So now that both corners are boxed, it's time to turn your bag right side out. And again, okay. you have to manhandle it. So you just kind of Don't be grab shy. the craft text and start yanking it through. Yep. Nice, exciting kind of way. And you now I found Get with this bag and the craft text, I was able to push out my corners with just my finger. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to want to use a chopstick or a turning tool like Alexanderson's four in one um, tool. Like kind of a blunt end. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be too sharp. Yeah, you wouldn't use you the don't stiletto. Want to poke through. No. Right. <laughs> so you just kind of push your finger and then look, these corners just kind of popped out. And you want to do there that to go. both sides and then kind of crease it with your fingers. So I'm gonna push this one out now. We'll save some time. We're not gonna do this side very tightly. No. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend. There we go. So when you have your bag, give it a good shake, and then just kind of manhandle your line straight. So I like to, okay, I have to do this a little tidier. There. I like to just kind of yep. press my finger little press. finger, press that just rectangle. Just give it that shape. Yep. Okay, so there you go. That's your right side out bag. And then the next step is going to be marking where you want your handles to be because you're gonna put your handles on and you're gonna base them before you sew it together. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is measure five inches in from both sides and put a little mark. So I'm just gonna do that. Let's go the right way on the ruler so I measure that an helps. actual five inches mm -hmm. and just put a little mark. I would normally, I can see it now, but you probably can't. I would normally use like a white chalk pen, pencil. So five inches in. And then you take your handle. So the handle, when it gets put on, you're going to put it facing this and then it's going to open up. So what you'll want to do. So right sides together. Right sides really together. Important. Right sides together. You line it up on the put it on the inside edge of that line and you can clip or you can pin it in place. So don't twist it, make sure it lays flat and bring it up to your other line, which is right here. Right sides together because you know how I know what happens if you don't <laughs> untwist this? Yeah, you end up with a twisted handle. Okay, so you've pinned your handles in place, then you're just gonna baste them in, in place. So this bag here has the handles basted in, on both I sides. I really recommend you do that because that keeps them from slipping and sliding when you're turning it inside out and doing all this stuff because it's really easy for them to get a little wonky and basting it, just take that extra time and baste them on there. Okay. 
And so you're going to repeat the whole process for the lining. You fuse the, put the fusible on the back of the lining, fuse it, sew. The, you're going to sew the, the two sides and the bottom, but the key is that you're going to leave at least a four inch hole in the middle of the bottom. Do we have one there? I do show? have one here. So yeah. this is done. It already has its box corners and everything, but I stopped stitching in the middle of the bottom and you really want to back tack because when you pull this inside out, you're pulling it over the whole craft text body and so it's going to get a little rough on it. So make sure you go, you yep, do some back stitching absolutely. and you create your lining. So you're going to have your lining with the right side of the lining in, the wrong side out, and we're going to insert the bag outside inside this lining. So it's okay. right sides together. There you go. Always want Takes right sides together. Yeah. Make sure you get those handles tucked in and lay them nice and flat. Okay. Here's an example. We're going to take this, tuck that inside, lay it flat, and we're going to match the side seams. Do it. There we go. All nice and tidy. Mine's not being nice and tight. There we go. Nice and tidy. Manhandle that. I know, I did. Manhandle that. You are in charge. I'm in charge. The fabric is not in charge. <gasps> so when it's time to pin, the most important part are going to be those two sides. So you're going to take the two seams and line them up. So I'm going to nest the seams, right? So one seam, the side, the inlining seam will go one way, the outside seam will go the other and then you pin those. Now I like to pin both seams down. Do you do that? Two, do. two pins on the seam side. Or clips. Pins it's, bite. This is fabric, so you can pin. I find you pins can. hold better. They do. Is that just me? Okay, so that's pinned. You're gonna go around, you're gonna pin the opposite side. Here I've got one pin going. You're gonna add your other pins, and then you're gonna pin all the way around Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam all the way around your top. All the way around. <laughs> so now that we're back from the sewing machine, we have the entire top sewn with a half inch seam allowance and it's time to turn it right side out. Yeah. You do have to manhandle this. So we're gonna pull the lining out from around the craft text bag. So we're gonna, so we're gonna scrunch that really as small as you can get it to <laughs> well, get I'm gonna do one there. side at a time. So yeah. I've scrunched that. Now I'm gonna reach in and scrunch this other side. Scrunch, yeah. Yeah, there and pull it go. out nicely well, without that, tearing the hole in the lining. That's lovely. That's lovely. And just keep working it around. See, this is the fun part. I love this part, because yeah. it's like, woohoo! I'm gonna push my little hands in there. Like you really got a bag now. Yep. And the lining's kind of set. I have my hand inside the hole in the top into the bottom of the bag so I can push this back out where it was before, make sure yep. it's nice and tiny. It's easier. You can do it later when the lining's in there, but it's easier Way if easier I can get where the now. seams are. Yep. And you can poke those corners out if they need mm -hmm. it. Okay, so now we need to take our lining. I, you could close your lining now. I close it after I've already stitched the top in case I do something wrong and I want to get in there again. Yeah. So you just need to shove your lining in to the bag. Mm -hmm. That's not so hard, right? Nope. There. Look at that. Um, you really want to make sure though that this seam is, it's pretty easy to get it tight sometimes. Your, um, the fabric like wants to kind of divot yeah. in there. Do you have a technique for pushing that out? Cause I have one that no, nobody I would approve of. No, I just go through, I'm, <laughs> I don't know if we want to hear that. So you're going to continue to crease it to make it all nice and smooth. Do you want me to tell you my technique? No. <laughs> okay. So I'd like to say that I have a bowl of water over here and I get my fingers wet in the bowl of water, but I don't. I, I get my fingers uh -huh. wet because it gives you grip and you can easily uh, roll it. Okay. If I ever made a tote bag for you, I wouldn't lick my fingers. I, I would, would use water. I would wash it. Yeah. Okay. Before or an it. iron. So once you get this iron. all creased, I iron it. you are going to take it and iron it now to make the edges nice and clean. Once they are, you can sew closed the bottom hole in your lining. Do you um, hand whip stitch it or ladder stitch it closed like no. you're supposed to? No. I don't either. I zigzag stitch over the edge. So I'm starting job. right inside and then I, I zigzag mm -hmm. off the edge and it holds it all tight. Look at how nice and fancy that is. It's in red thread so you yeah. can see it. So it's nice. That you wouldn't normally. I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally sew that in red thread. So that's how I sew my lining. So once that's sewn, you are going to top stitch all around this edge. And since we have this, we can just show you there. That's top stitch. 
top stitch right along the It end. looks beautiful. Nice oh, job. Thank you. You know that I love using my blind hem foot lining up against the side so it keeps it a consistent distance apart. And this is about a sixteenth of an inch, but you could do a sixteenth and eighth, a quarter. Your seam allowance is, is a half an inch, so any size you, you want. You could get fancy and do two rows. Sometimes oh, they get fancy. Or decorative stitches. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. yeah. That's for the next so one. So that's your completed Different bag. One. So your homework for next time, make the bag. We want to see your bag. We're so excited. This is going to be really fun. Take your time, but it's really, it's really doable. Yeah. Yay. Great. And take photos of your homework assignment and post it at hashtag Craft Text University on yeah, Pinterest University. and Instagram. So Pinterest and Instagram, hashtag Craft Text University. Yep. And, and that's it, right? So we'll class see you next class. Shove it through and just start pulling. Here you, ooh, oh. so you just ripped my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, let's redo that one. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> it I can't, it's, it's moving. The interface is everywhere. Here, so this is our tail bag. <laughs>